Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. First and four starts with breaking news from the west side of Detroit. Police investigating the discovery of a young teenager shot multiple times. Her body found inside a car. Local 4's Victor Williams live at the scene. What have you learned, Victor? Well, Karen, that young girl's body was found in a vehicle, just like you said, right behind me in this alleyway, very close to Burnett. It was found in a 2011 Chevy Malibu, black by the way. We're told that some people living in the area on Burnett could hear shots being fired last night around 10 p.m. Fast forward to this morning. That's when police found the body inside the vehicle after more residents made that gruesome discovery once the sun started shining. Now, the vehicle the young victim was in turned out to be linked to a carjacking. Either way, the Detroit Police Department is working to first identify this young woman as soon as possible and then find out who did this to her. She's a, a Jane Doe to us at this point. We're trying to identify her. Uh, black female, about maybe 16 years old, about 5'5", 150 pounds. Uh, our detectives are combing through our missing persons reports to see if uh, we can maybe identify her. Identifying the victim is going to be really important. And once we identify the victim, we'll, we'll, we'll have an idea what the victim you know, who, who they were last with and, uh, and take the investigation from there. And law officials are in the very early stages of this investigation. They're asking those nearby that might have any type of information to give them a call as soon as possible or call Crime Stoppers and submit an anonymous tip at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Victor Williams. Local. All right, Victor, we know you'll be working the scene. We'll check back with you tonight at 5. We're also tracking Operation Candyman. It is a massive crackdown on what Michigan State Police say is an illegal clinic offering prescription drugs. Warrants have been served today in Wayne, Oakland and Genesee counties. Our cameras were at the main search site on the west side of Detroit at 8 Mile and North Lawn. Officers swarmed all over the Lighthouse Medical Center. Investigators say patients came to get powerful painkillers, but there was no doctor on site to issue those prescriptions. State police gave us a sense of what they believe was going on. This is what's killing Michiganders, is people doing exactly what they're doing right out here. Um, there are literally busloads of people being driven up to this establishment uh, to get their illegal prescriptions. Right now, five suspects have been detained. We're told two of them are nurse practitioners. We'll have more on those suspects, where they came from, and where the investigation stands tonight on Local 4 News at 5. Well, there is a new sign that we could see a retrial for two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer. Prosecutors are asking a judge to postpone the June 8th sentencing of Caleb Franks. He pleaded guilty to conspiring to kidnap Whitmer, but could get a shorter sentence for cooperating with prosecutors. He is expected to testify at the second trial of Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. Back in April, a jury couldn't reach a unanimous verdict in their cases. Defense attorneys say any plot was driven by undercover agents and FBI informants. Michigan remains in a tricky spot when it comes to COVID-19. Many people are struggling and wondering if they can get back to normal, but the numbers are going up. State just told us it recorded more than 27,000 new cases in the past week. It's a jump from May 4th when we saw nearly 19,000. Now remember the state only updates the numbers once a week, plus that number may not reflect home test results if those cases are not reported to the state. The number of deaths climbed slightly. We saw 76 virus related casualties and that's compared to 62 last week. Detroit basketball fans are mourning the loss of a legendary Detroit Piston. The NBA has announced Hall of Famer Bob Lanier died yesterday. The league said he died after a short illness, but there were reports he was battling bladder cancer back in 2019. Lanier played 14 seasons with the Pistons and the Milwaukee Bucks. He's third on the Pistons career list in both points and rebounds. Lanier was just 73 years old. You know, it kind of feels like we might have skipped spring, plunged into summer, but I have to say, Paul, I don't think a lot of people are complaining. We've got a nice evening ahead. You know, our old pal Mort Krim used to say, Paul, 
We didn't have spring. We just went straight from winter to something you know, on that Mort voice. I mean, he said that every year and it seems like that happens. Look at this. We're in most of us are in the 80s right now. 81 over in Detroit, 80, uh, 79 in Ann Arbor, 82 in Port Huron, 83 over in Adrian. And the wind is fairly light this afternoon. Storm Tracker 4 showing nothing going on around here. We'll talk more about this a little later. That's not going to affect us. Batch of showers there. And as we move through the evening hours, if you're going down to the Tiger game, man, what a week it's been down at Comerica Park. The weather's been fantastic. We'll have those high clouds around. Very nice, pleasant evening around 80 degrees late in the afternoon and then falling to eh, upper 60s to around 70 for that uh, end of the game walk back to the car. How long is this stuff going to last? We all want it to last. Well, it's not going to last, but we'll tell you the timetable on that coming up in just a few, Karen. All right, thank you, Paul. We are waiting for a historic vote on abortion in the United States Senate. It is expected to fail, but Democratic leaders want every single senator on record before a big Supreme Court ruling. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom tracking the very latest events in Washington. Kim. Karen, good afternoon. The issue of abortion, of course, has taken center stage in D.C. since an opinion draft was leaked from the United States Supreme Court more than a week ago. If that opinion holds, the high court is expected to use a Mississippi case to overturn Roe versus Wade. Now, Democrats say they're trying to pass a federal law that would protect abortion rights. The proposed Women's Health Protection Act would codify Roe versus Wade, and it would also ban some requirements states have put into place, such as waiting periods and mandatory doctor's visits. The bill likely has zero Republican support. GOP Senators Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski proposed a different bill that would protect Roe but still allow some state restrictions. Conservative-leaning Democrat Joe Manchin says he might have supported something like that, but it looks as if he'll cross party lines today. 70% of the American public wants Roe v. Wade to be codified, as has been precedented law for 50 years. To me, that would be the reasonable, rational thing to do. The bill we have today to vote on, the Women's Health Protection Act, and I respect people who support, but don't make no mistake, it is not Roe v. Wade codification. It's an expansion. Before the day is over, every member of this body will make a choice. Vote to protect the fundamental rights of women across the country or stand with five conservative justices ready to destroy these rights in one felled swoop. Without Senator Manchin's vote, the Democrats won't even get a majority, much less the 60 votes needed to move the legislation forward. But the vote means the issue could become a big talking point in the midterm elections, which are right around the corner. So we'll be monitoring events on Capitol Hill, and we'll have updates as needed, including tonight when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Kim. Sure. Well, you don't have to tell, talk to you about the sticker shock that we're all going through on things like gas and food and cars, but we can tell you there's a small sign. We may have put the peak behind us. Today's consumer price index is up 8.3% from a year ago. It's still very high, but slightly lower than March. We haven't seen any kind of slowdown since last August. Gasoline saw the biggest jump this month. It's up more than 43% since last April. Also hit a new record today, up to $4.40 a gallon for the national average. Ukraine is putting new pressure on Russia the day after the U.S. House of Representatives approved a huge new aid package. Last night, the House voted in favor of $40 billion in military, economic and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. It now heads to the Senate, where Democratic leader Chuck Schumer promises quick action. Meantime, Ukraine has shut down a pipeline that carries Russian natural gas to Western Europe. That has Russia saying it will try to annex the Ukrainian region surrounding the pipeline. Ukraine's president claims his military is pushing Russian troops away from the city of Kharkiv. That city is a key to Russia's offense in the Donbas region. Right now, U.S. and NATO officials are worried neither side will have a decisive victory and the war will grind on indefinitely. So what you're looking at here is an emergency extraction. It's not the real deal, but it is really real realistic. And that is part because it is a training exercise for high school firefighter cadets. Paula Tutman takes us to a program that could turn local students into highly sought after firefighters across the country. These are students who are actually part of a firefighting academy, gaining real knowledge and fire experience while simultaneously earning high school and college credits. This is a great uh, culmination of our whole year. The 
students and EMT have learned all their medical skills and the firefighters have learned all their firefighting skills, including vehicle extrication. So today we're going to do a simulated drunk driving um, crash. The long and short of it is you just can't raise your hand and say, I want to be a firefighter. It takes hard work and specialized training. This class is actually a fire cadet program. We actually get to learn more with it. Like we use the trucks, we use the fire hydrants. We go over more scenarios. We can also like uh, simulate plane, fire, house fires. The students will graduate with EMT, Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, and Hazardous Materials Operations Training. Now, if you don't know what all of those credentials mean, just ask any fire chief out there. Hungry for young, strong, eager bodies, interested in the fire service. Yeah, like Chief Brian Tyrell, the fire chief for the Washington Township Fire Department in Northern Macomb County. We do want to try to recruit that those younger folks into this business so that we can sustain them and grow them over a 20, 25 year career. That's the vision and that's the goal. Um, but there's just not enough people looking to get into our business um, for the open spots across Michigan. Every single skill taught in a regular fire academy is taught right here. And these days, most full-time professional fire departments transport more medical patients than fighting actual fires. And so that EMT or emergency medical technician skill is big and highly sought after. I want to be um, a firefighter slash paramedic because um, I really want to help people. Uh, because when I help people, it fulfills me. I'm probably going to be working at Westland Fire Department right after school. And because this exhibition also served as real life lessons in what can happen when you drink and drive, not only were students showing off what they learned, but they were teaching their peers. I'm going to take that this one day could happen to me if I make the wrong decision of drinking and driving. Okay, so a whole lot of lessons being learned right there. I'm at the beautiful brand new Washington Township Fire Station 3. It still has that shiny penny new car smell. The chief here is excited about a program like this, as well as chiefs everywhere. All the chiefs I talk to say they love these kinds of programs. They need this talent, and they love the passion that these young people bring to this. Karen? What a great experience for those young people. Thank you, Paula. We appreciate it.